You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. All right, welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Call. And on today's podcast, I'm going to go over my gear for late season rifle mule deer, which I have coming up. I have a number of hunts across different states, late season. It's going to be cold, probably. Uh, it could be like this on some days, which is about 60 degrees in the afternoon, but then it could just hit you with negative uh, below zero temps as well. So I'm going to go through the gear. If you're listening to this podcast, you might want to tune into the YouTube video and watch it as this is highly visual as I go through each piece of gear. Uh, I got Brad Hunt with me behind the camera, running the running the camera. How are you, Brad? Great. So uh, we've just returned from about a month of hunting across various states um, for moose, caribou, elk, some archery, some rifle. Uh, now we're back and uh, we got a little space in between hunts to, to do this gear dump. Um, and uh, so I'm going to get into that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that series we did uh, about a crow killer. Jeremiah Johnson, some of you didn't, but a lot of you did. And it's just what we're doing in between hunts to give you guys some content that's a little different. We got Daniel Boone coming up shortly. Uh, for those of you who aren't is interested in a book club review type type uh, podcast, you're just going to have to wait till we get back from our, uh, from our hunts and we can resume our normal activity. But we're going to be gone for the next two or three weeks, so... Um, at least we're going to be able to put something out. I enjoyed the Daniel Boone book. So I think you will too, if you're into that stuff. All right. So I'm going to start with what I'm wearing, what I'm wearing in and what I'm going to wear on this hunt. This is uh, a new, uh, jacket from origin. Uh, origin is, oh, who's part of origin. Cameron Haynes is, is involved with origin. Uh, Kip Fowler, founder of Under Armour, uh, Jocko Willink, Pete, Pete. Yep. So we, there's a number of, of, of great guys that I really respect who are, who are, uh, part of this company and what they're doing is they're, they're making, uh, their, their, their goal is to bring manufacturing back to the United States. It's a, it's a tall order because, um, so much of what's being, being, um, made is overseas and purchased and built and all the manufacturing kind of went over there to Vietnam or China over the last, uh, well, it, by the, by the nineties, it was pretty much gone. And, uh, so here we are today without the means to manufacture our own products. And we rely on China and overseas builders for that manufacturers for that. And, um, these guys are saying, Hey, we're not going to do that. So they decided to try to build some hunting clothing, a hunting line with uh, gear and equipment all here in the United States that they can manufacture with and all manufactured here. Um, the textiles, the materials, the type of stuff that you get from uh, overseas, they're not able to compete with just yet. But there are some garments that they can make, like this wool blend, that is a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice garment that gets the job done and supports, supports their efforts, supports the United States manufacturing business. And, uh, and honestly, I really like it. I've been wearing it for probably two weeks now. Um, Kip Fowler sent it to me and I, I'm stoked actually. I think it's this nice, uh, a nice blend between typically what I do is I wear really, uh, thin layers of, of light clothing with like a merino wool top and, uh, just a regular pant light pant like a kuyu katana or something or even um, a sitka timberline okay then i go and hunt and then i just have puffy layers to go on top because the weight to warmth ratio of a puffy layer just is phenomenal the problem with that is there's this in between where it's cold but you got to move and you, i i tend to not have those types of layers because i sort of accomplish my warmth by wearing that thin merino layer that weighs virtually nothing and throwing like a rain jacket on top of that that kind of gets me that but it's still sweaty it's still not very well insulated it blocks the wind but i'm active it's just not the best but it is light it's a lightweight setup uh ryan brings some ugly uh what is it uh like wool pullover gray thing that i think he found under a bridge in san francisco and um 
he wears that often. And it's, it's very similar to this, actually. Uh, I'm anxious to show this to Ryan and see what he thinks about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear this on the trip and really see how it performs in all these weather conditions. But I have a suspicion based on what I've been doing around the house for the past two weeks in it. I'm going to like it. It's, uh, I like zips instead of pullovers because because they're so easy to take on and off. So I'm actually uh, looking forward to this. So this is the top that I'm going to wear. We'll see how it goes. I'll let you guys know what I think of it when I get back. Okay. The other thing that I'm wearing is I got my Peaks Gators. Um, we've talked about that. Um, I think these Gators are, are uh, among the best in the market that you can get. They're freaking durable as all get out. Um, you know, we've gone through many, many test days in these from, from uh, Alaska to New Zealand to the United States, uh, lower 48, just different mountain ranges. And these things are built, the, the, the materials in these are just, uh, the, b between the webbing and the threading being of special material, the patch, the Hyperlon patch, the, the buckles, heavy duty. I've used a lot of gaiters in my life. These things are tough and they fit great. Um, I love their, I love the fit and feel, the durability. They just work. They're, they're an awesome gator, period. So that's Peaks. Peaks uh, is a partner of ours. And um, when you use the code GRITTY, it helps out the podcast. And uh, you also get a discount. So you can't hardly go wrong with these gators so if you want to support the show and you want a damn good pair of gators check out peaks equipment so those are the gators um i'm gonna wear these kuyu katana pants mostly um they're tried and true i know them i i sweat like a madman from the waist down i'm the, i'm your sweaty butt guy and uh these have vents on the side they're thin they they don't they don't they're kind of a four-way stretch um they don't get baggier and baggier by the day I wore uh, Piranha Zions the other day on a hunt with Brad. Why not? I just decided to try them out. They're, they're a great, lightweight, breathable pant, but they get two sizes bigger by the end of a five-day hunt. They just stretch, 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 stretch. The Kuyu Katana do not do that. It's a great pant. Uh, I, love the, I love these things, and they're a lightweight pant. So I'm going to wear these probably most of the trip. However, I have been... Um, on a few hunts lately where I've been bringing two pairs of pants. I normally don't do that. I just make one work. But I've been sweating so bad on some of these high exertion hunts when we when we pack 12, 14 miles in a day, eight miles. And it's nice to put on a pair of pants, sweat them out, and then when I get to the top, throw on a dry pair of pants that's thicker and warmer. I just like bouncing back and forth between two pairs of pants. We have a long hunt ahead of us. So I'm going to go ahead and do that this time. Normally I bring one and I just either wear a pant that's a little too warm or a pant that's a little too cool and try to compensate with puffies on the outside or long johns. I haven't worn long johns in years, but some people do. But uh, this time I'm going to try uh, two pairs of pants. So I got the Kuyu Katana as my lightweight thin pant that I'll wear when it gets real cold. I have my Sitka Timberline pant um, that I've had for like six years now, and uh, I'm going to wear those as well. I, I, I like those for late season. So a little bit of everything in there. Um, I got my um, tried and true, darn tough, uh, pretty thin, lightweight hiking socks, and over here I have um, these uh, smart wool uh, liners these are the classic no cushion liners they stopped making them and they came back and started making them again um, i've had some of these pairs i've had them last five years wearing them as a daily sock not not just for hunts but i like a sock liner with this thin sock i don't like thick socks so i've got those in here and then i've got um my boot which is for this hunt i'm going to wear a crispy laponia this is the 2.0 um, this boot is lightweight, breathable. It's got sort of, uh, in the, in the front here, it's got like a neoprene that breathes fairly well. I like the lacing all the way up to the toe box. I can lace these boots many different ways, depending on where I'm getting a hot spot. If I'm getting a hot spot, they're lightweight. These are not insulated. So, um, 
I decided, uh, cause I sweat so much, my feet get so wet hiking and because of the weather forecast, the way it is, I'm going to roll with these boots and, uh, in order to handle the cold, what I've done instead of uh, hiking with a bigger, thicker boot is I threw in some foot warmers. And I'll get into those a little bit later. But I just grabbed some toe warmers and some footbed warmers. If my feet do get uh, miserably cold or, or they're starting to, it, it's, it's just not, it's early in the morning or evening. Usually it's the morning. It's just tough. I'll throw those foot warmers in and I'll just use those to keep my feet warm. Plus foot warmers just tend to generate some external heat that's not your own and it's just it's hard to beat the comfort from that so last year i did a hunt with brian and i brought in the same time of year and it just didn't get cold enough and i brought the wild rocks and they were just too hot too heavy too warm and for what we were doing it just wasn't wasn't the boot for the job in years past i've been on some hunts about that time of year and it was negative 10 degrees and uh that was brutal and those boots were great but more often than not that's not the weather we're getting and that's not what the forecast says so i'm going to go with the more uh, lightweight breathable uh, easy hiking boot comfortable boot and i'm simply going to if things get go south throw in the foot warmers um, i have the uh in here i have the sheep feet insoles i like the single layer not the double layer insoles I don't, again, I don't like super cushiony type stuff, but these are custom orthotics that Sheep Feet puts together that are custom um, fit to my foot. So they'll take, if, if you're interested in a pair, they send you a mold. Uh, I think they even are about to come out with a new age digital way of doing it. Like a, I don't know, some kind of scan of your foot and it does the same thing. But but basically they, they imprint your foot and then they build a custom insole and um, you throw it in your boot and it makes your boot so much more comfortable. It, it gives you a lot of added performance. I don't have foot cramping and tiredness like I have foot fatigue, foot fatigue like I did prior to owning sheep feet. I've, I've got sheep feet maybe three or four years ago and I haven't gone back since every shoe I own has a pair in there. And, uh, like I said, I like the single layer. I think the double takes up too much space. I end up needing to get a boot a little bit bigger. Um, I just, and I don't like that much cushion. So I, I really like, uh, these, the, the, the sheep feet, single layer orthotic. So that's what I've got for the, for the feet. And then this is, a uh, another origin Merino, like wool type blend this top. And, um, I really like it. Uh, normally on a hunt like this, I would bring like a mountain ops, uh, Merino, uh, hoodie. That's thin layered, like the lightweight version. And then I would throw like a Sitka Apex hoodie on top of it to give me two layers when I feel like it or to go with one, either one, depending on the temperature, um, or I can double them up. Well, this is almost on par with the Apex hoodie in terms of uh, its weight. And uh, like I said, I'm going to test it. It's USA made instead of China and Vietnam and such. I want to support uh, what Origin is doing. I like the American-made thing, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna wear this and uh, see how see how it does. And uh, I love the cut. I love the the uh, hoodie, and I love the face mask. Um, it's not too tight. It's all loose. I could see myself living in this for archery season. I mean, I really do like it. And so I wore this a lot with this on the outside when it was about 25 degrees walking around the house with a little beanie on, seeing how I liked it, trying the, the hood on, um, seeing how I liked it. These are not wind blocking layers. So what I found was if it got real windy, it was a little bit cold, but, but if I had to hike, I really liked the, the, the layering system. Um, if it got real cold though, I'd throw a puffy over the top of all of it. Um, and, uh, I'll get into that here in a minute, but I'm going to try that out. We'll see how it goes. Um, and then um, got my bino harness, which is what I always bring. I, it, it's a uh, marsupial gear harness. I've got uh, a belt, Kuyu belt. I like these uh, real thin, minimal belts, web webbing belts that I'll wear. And then uh, I got, this is my uh, Microlite GSI. I have so many of these kicking around the house and stuff. I have green, white 
like silver like i got them everywhere i leave them at bow shops and people's houses and you're welcome everybody who has one that uh, i left at your house it has the sticker gritty on it usually but this is an old school i've had this bottle for a long time one of my first micro lights so this bottle um is uh stainless steel it's um it keeps everything hot all day long or cold depending on what i want to put into it i like that i'm not you know mixing up some my i'm not drinking out of plastic and stuff uh, especially when i add hot fluids to it on these later seasons it's nice to sip on some hot ignite or hot chocolate or something throughout the day especially when it's freezing cold and it'll stay hot also you know when you i like having a water bottle that i can mix things in i'm not a bladder fan um i'll fill up water bladders to haul water and to keep water at the at the teepee and stuff or to carry i'll get into that in a minute but for drinking everything pretty much that i ingest goes in this bottle gets sterilized and drunk right from here but um yeah this is the gsi micro light been liking it been using it for years i also use it as a roller to roll out my hand my, i throw it on the stealthy hunter um glassing pad which i have right here and i literally will roll out the glutes and the hams and the it band um the shoulder but usually the calf muscles as they stiffen and get tight um use this kind of like a foam roller although it's not and uh it's amazing it works great and, but any cylinder can do the same thing or any rock you find on the ground which i've used too so um there we go there's the bottle and uh yeah so that's kind of um what what i'm you know wearing day to day minus my puffy layers i'll get into that in my rain gear as i go through the bag um let's talk about backpacks um here's my initial ascent backpack which i've used on a bunch of hunts this year this is my stone glacier pack which i've used on a couple hunts as well i bounce back and forth between the two packs you know whenever i'm using the, the stone glacier i'm i'm bitching that it doesn't have the the the, the parts that the initial ascent has and when i use the initial ascent i'm complaining because it's not like my stone what i've learned over the years of using different packs is they they each have their pros and cons N none of them are like perfect for everything but you might use something and go oh this is 90 percent of what i want or 80 percent of what i want but i really like this mesh pocket that this company makes or i like the top lid that this company makes or just like the fit of this one they're all a little bit different. Um, I've enjoyed testing and using lots of different backpacks over the years. Um, I'll tell you real quick, this is my initial ascent pack, which I really like. Um, this is the frame that, uh, it, that, it, that it leverages and it's pretty stiff. This is the, um, this is the, the frame and, and the hips, the, the, the hip belt and everything without the bag on it. So this is like your meat shelf. And uh, it's pretty handy. It's got little little pouches. And during hunting season, my dad and I would ditch our bag uh, for elk. And uh, I would throw the top lid on here like so. And I'd throw my a puffy in there and my game bags. And I had a lot of stuff in, this, in the initial scent top lid. And I'll run around with this real minimal setup. And I've got this pack board for when I do kill an elk or something. I have what I need to start hauling it out you know but it's also minimal there's no big bag with it i really do like that setup um but there's things i don't like about it and um partly it's a little bit noisier uh, because you got this frame that can get bumped or squeaks a little bit more um but then again you know it carries heavy loads better than any pack that i've used but when it's not a heavy load it's stiff and it's a little more it's a little less comfortable than like let's say my stone when it's um in that lower weight range so each of them like i said have their pros and cons on this particular hunt i have i'm good i'm using the stone on one hunt and i'm using the initial ascent on another hunt and uh we'll we'll uh i i like still continuing i got prototypes uh bags that i'm running on the uh on the initial ascent that i'm testing and messing around with trying to tear apart and rip and 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 testing function and design and so far, um, there's, there's things I really love about it and things I don't, and I'm going to continue down that path. One of the things I do really love about the initial ascent, 
um, well, I got it in my hand here is I like this top lid. When you look at this top lid compared to the stone top lid, and I really do like how big it is. And then the zipper's huge. And when I get in here, I can, I can easily find whatever I want in here. And I do enjoy, I, when I go into my tent at night, I pull everything I want at night from my spoon to my fire starting kit to my toothbrush, my toiletries, everything. Everything I want is in here. So when I enter my tent, I pull my top lids off my backpacks, toss them next to the head of my sleeping bag, and I stuff my bag in a corner because I don't need anything out of my bag. It's all in this top lid. And so um, I, 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 like, I like running that way. And then with all my top lids, if I was in a pinch and I need to ditch my bag and just go, I know that I have a little bit of food, a little bit of water, a little bit of um, fire starter. I have all my kind of extras in these top lids and all my top lids are rigged with straps. So this one has straps here that I can buckle on so I could just sling this over my shoulder or I can even sling it on my back real quick and it it will be a lightweight safety thing where I can stuff a puffy in here. I can stuff just a little bit of everything I need. If I had to spend the night somewhere, you know, I got my inReach in here. I got kind of between my bino harness and my top lids, I kind of got everything covered. So I kind of strategically store my gear in there for that purpose. If I just need to rock and roll real quick, I can ditch my bag, grab my top lid and go. And, uh, especially for archery it's it's very handy so you can see in comparison the stone top lid is a lot smaller it seems smaller i should say i i joke that the stone top lid is kind of like what's that bag in harry potter where hermione just can go in and like it just there's a never-ending depth and size to it it's like a magical sure, bag just say a black hole <laughs> it's like a black hole like literally it's got kind of a small access port and then it's like what where's that thing and i will sit here and cuss this bag out because i don't want to have to take a whole bunch of stuff out to get to what i want but i have it stuffed so much where my i put the same amount in my initial ascent i don't have this problem so what i've learned is i i take you can see I, I like these initial ascent stuff sacks. So they're in my um, stone bag. Brand conflicts, which is my MO. Um, but I like it all. I think they are all making great stuff. Competition is the way it should be between brands and companies and they innovate differently. But so what I do is I have, I know I have a few strategic stuff sacks. That way I'm like, I don't have to search for one item in here. I just need to grab the one bag it's in. So I know what's in this bag, and I have another another uh, initial ascent bag similar to that. Like it's a little bit smaller, so I know what is in these bags. Like I know because I spend so much time hunting, and I have them organized in a certain way. So I know when I need my spoon because it's spoon, it's eating time. I know it's in this big bag. I know where my headlamp is in here. I know where my gloves are. I like a gloves and a hat. That's all, it's in there. Like, I know. So I don't have to dig in my bag for each of those individual items. I just need to dig for the one stuff sack. This stuff sack, similar. I know what's in here. I'll get into that in just a minute. So I've learned like, okay, if I can pluck those two bags out and I know what's in there, I can kind of find everything else. So I've got some stuff sacks here. That's like toilet paper, to toiletries and toothbrush and all that. And I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so I'll go through what's in the top, top lid here in just a sec. But you get the idea. This is, uh, it's, 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 but I do, I am impressed with the stone's lid, how much it does fit in there. I just wish the access was a little better. But actually it's bigger than it looks, a lot bigger. A lot more functional than it looks and your stuff doesn't fall out by the way there are some brands where if you unzip it everything wants to fall out unless the bag it's so if this bag is laying down i can unzip it and stuff won't fall out if it's standing up i can unzip it and stuff won't fall out some companies it's like if you lay it down and unzip it it won't fall out but if it's standing up and you do it everything goes so stone stone ends end initial they kind of built those lids so 
you can access them and you're and you don't lose gear falling out the top of your lid okay so <clears throat> let's let's go over what's in my pack um i got an uh my my uh in reach mini inside here i've got some fingerless gloves they're not truly fingerless but i made them fingerless uh these sick merinos i just cut the fingers off um I have uh, those black Ovis fingerless in the mail on their way here. I have a pair of earplugs right here, which are custom molded to my ears. This is a, a backup pair, as I have my main pair inside my bino harness already. So I have two pairs of earplugs, um, just in case they're so easy to lose. I have a backup inside here. Uh, I have Allen keys for various things. It's mostly an archery thing, but um, sometimes rifle stuff as well. Um, I have um, a, a mesh bag in here, which um, head net, which is great for mosquito season. Not necessarily needed this time of year, but it's in there. Got a compass in here, a little, little compass dealy. I got four or five lighters in here for, for fire starting and uh, lots of redundant lighters. I have a headlamp here that I've had for years. This is uh, just a backup and it's a lightweight. It has four uh, triple A's in there. And, um, I really, it just sits in there. I haven't used it in a long time because I have my rechargeable peaks headlamp. Um, so just, I haven't actually had to use it yet. Uh, I loaned it to, uh, one of the guys who lost their headlamp on our last hunt, but I have not used it in a while. So that's, what's in this and over here. I have a pair of, um, I have this peaks headlamp which I've talked about on other shows. If you don't have one, I highly recommend it. It has a very powerful beam. It burns for hours and hours and hours, and it is rechargeable uh, with a little port right here. Um, the, the lamp is, uh, you'll see lamps that look like this, but they are not the same. Uh, we went through a lot of work, working with Peaks, Lampers and I, in designing uh, how we wanted the LEDs to work, how we wanted the algorithm, the, the, you know, the, the tech in here to fire the bulbs, uh, how they consume electricity, all those sorts of things. Um, I'm no engineer. I just said, Hey, this is what we want. And they finally came out with it. It burns bright. It burns a long time and it's rechargeable. When we're out there doing a lot of night hikes with heavy loads, you want to see if you're going to get cliffed out. You want to see if there's a grizzly bear in front of you. We want, we want to see, um, we want it to burn all night long at the highest bright setting, not, not at some dim light setting. And then, uh, once I use it up, uh, after, if I did use it up all night, I can throw it on a, on a charger and recharge this battery and go. Although I've been on 10 day hunts and never had to charge this one time. So the battery lasts forever. So those are all sort of the prerequisites of what we were looking for in a headlamp. And, uh, I highly recommend this. So if you, uh, if you're interested in a headlamp, I highly recommend it. It's a Peaks Duo backcountry headlamp. It does a red light, green light, has some memory settings. So check it out. Use the code GRITTY and you will save. And it helps us keep doing our show. Um, I've got a, I, I, I like this Gore Windstopper hat. Uh, I've always kind of liked these Sitka Windstopper hats. Uh, I used to have different colored, a brown one, a gray one. Uh, I had a black one. For some reason, uh, over the years, I lose hats. So what I have right now is like this whitetail camo version, which I don't really care about. But um, that's that's uh, that. I have um, a spoon in here, a Peaks titanium spoon. And I have, I have multiple spoons. The other spoon is in here. I just tossed it in real quick. I need to get it into the main bag. But, uh, oh, it's right here. So I have, I always bring two spoons. Um, and the reason I bring two spoons is because uh, I hate losing a spoon in your hose and you're borrowing from a friend or whatever. They weigh nothing. They weigh nothing. So always bring one, uh, always bring two spoons. It's not a big deal. Easy to do. And then uh, I have these Sitka gloves. These are a um, fleece glove, um, which this is the liner, which goes inside the outer glove, which I'll show you guys later, that glove. But uh, I do like gloves with liners like this because sometimes it's just not that cold. You just want this. Other times, you know, you need to protect against rain and snow and wind and you can throw the Gore-Tex over it. It's just another layer setup. 
Um, and that has turned out to be a great glove. So I'll get into the rest of that, the pieces of that glove here soon. I used to not like those gloves, found them totally annoying, but now I've come around to actually really like them. <laughs> Shows what I know. My opinions evolve over time. So if you, if you, if, uh, don't always, um, like I have, I have what I like. And then as I get to know gear, sometimes more, I'm forced to use something. I realize I was wrong about it in the past or it's just it's evolution. Uh, this is the, um, ultralight UV water purifier, um, by Steri Pin. For some reason, I have a hard time finding these at actual backcountry gear shops like REI or something. It's just something I got to buy online like Amazon. It's got a charging port right there so I can charge it. So there is no batteries for it. I, again, pretty much my whole kit is rechargeable. Everything I have in here is rechargeable. Everything I use, I can charge. And we'll get into the solar panel here in just a minute which then makes it so I pretty much never have a risk of ever not having juice to power my electronics. It's kind of been a game changer over the last year and a half. One thing I want to mention about the um, inReach, for those that don't know, Garmin inReach um, allows you to have satellite communication when you are off grid. So with this little puppy, I can uh, text my wife. I have a plan that gives me unlimited minutes. And I just text her and say, how are you doing? And we text throughout the day. Um, and uh, it, it allows me to have that ability. Now, when, when we were, um, sometimes we've been in situations where we're relying on, um, you know, we're, we're in the middle of nowhere. And we're going to get picked up either by a, a, a horse crew or an airplane or a ride is going to come pick us up at the end of a long hunt, especially if it's a rafting trip or some kind of flight trip. Now, this is both for safety and to stay in contact with family and loved ones and to communicate maybe your buddy and you got separated. You can text one another with this because it's all satellite driven. But um, we've had some experiences in, in recent months where th these have froze, like Lampers, his is locked up took quite a while for him to figure out um, how to get it to work again. And I believe he said it's this like uh, circle return button along with the power button. You hold it down and it'll do a hard reset and reboot it when it freezes. I'd never had that happen before. Another friend of ours, there's just quit. It just froze and then shut off and never worked again. Um, I've been thinking about it a lot since then. I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, when I have a hunt that's extremely off grid, um, you know, it is, we do have redundant in a sense because I have one, Ryan has one, Brad has one, everybody has their own satellite communication in reach. So if one craps out, you have another, but these are so light and little that it's almost worth having two. One that just, especially in a really remote hunt, one that, um, you never use that's fully charged all the time because sometimes these do run out of juice quite a bit and then you got to charge them up but if you have one that's kind of there always ready to go and you could have one of those plans where it only gives you like the ability to send like just a couple messages a month so it's a real cheap plan you get on one of those plans and have a backup um it's not a bad idea i've been thinking about it um wouldn't be bad to have two, one that just your straight up emergency sits there, never gets tapped into. I, I listened to the audio book uh, by Ranella Meat Eater on Campfire Stories, Close Calls. Got me thinking about a lot. Of, <laughs> there's like book one and two or whatever. Got me thinking about a lot of um, prep, preparedness type stuff. Uh, and uh, having an inReach that you never touch that has a simple plan attached to it where you can just SOS if you needed to and always has power. Um, and especially if you drop it, lose it, it, it breaks, uh, just freezes on you. Uh, it's pretty smart, I think, to actually have two. On that same note, um, I almost lost my phone in the river more than one time. Um, I almost dropped it. One time I was with Brad this year and it just fell out of my pocket. Um, and he was walking behind me and he's like, picked it up. We were in the middle of nowhere. I mean, if he wasn't there, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have found my phone again. 
And I've been thinking about it lately. And it's like, maybe because I rely on maps so much and also to interact with my inReach. So I've been considering as I have like three or four old iPhones, just, just older versions, just sitting at, in a drawer at the house. Um, that's another redundant thing. Get yourself a second iPhone or, or a second digital phone for your maps and uh, a couple other things um, so that if you were to lose your phone, you have a backup because I don't, we, we rely on our phones nowadays in a way that we never have in the past for, for what we do in the back country. We are using our phones a lot more than we used to because they are our map systems with 3d and all these other capabilities. If I were to lose my map in some of these remote areas and some now nah, drop it in a Creek or something, um, that could be a real problem. I still have paper maps, but it's not the same. Um, and uh, so another thing to consider, uh, I'm looking at getting it downloaded, getting my maps downloaded to a secondary phone and um, having, you know, a minimal thing set up for that as well, just for, just to be redundant, just a little, little backup. So um, anyway, that, that just, that's not really needed on any hike where we can just hike out in a day or half a day, you know, anything that's uh, sort of you know, Montana, generally, uh, Wyoming, Utah, Idaho, we can just bomb out on some of those hunts, but some of these real rugged backcountry hunts that are cold and dangerous, um, having some backups like that, not a bad idea. Um, toiletries, let's get into this. I have baby wipes. I have Aquaphor, um, and I have a little bit of lotion in here. Um, um, hydrocortisol cream. Um, uh, I got this, uh, Rectacare lidocaine, uh, 5%. Uh, look, sometimes things get chafed or things go, go wrong in the nether region from just days of hiking, sweaty, whatever, whatever happens. And, uh, that lidocaine stuff has been nice because it numbs everything. I uh, haven't needed anything like that in a long time, but I pack it anyway just in case. When we did the Western Hunting Summit, I was actually up there with a number of dudes who went on the long hikes and got their butts chafed, bloody chafed, um, sore issues happen. And so having a little bit of buttercream, like like different uh, biker, mountain bikers lube or, or some kind of, uh, I use Aquaphor, it's, it's water-based, it's not oil-based, um, a little bit of that between the cheeks as they're rubbing as you hike can really go a long way in uh, postponing or preventing any kind of uh, pain or soreness or whatever that might happen from chafing. So um, that's that's in that kit. And then, uh, of course, toothbrush, floss, that kind of thing. I always bring uh, fingernail clippers and toenail clippers, a pair of toenail clippers, because I'm gone in the so much that sometimes those can be a problem and I just have them with me handy in there. It's not much weight. Um, I have boot warmers. These are Graxaw. These are mostly a late season choice or really wet weather hunt choice. I run these boot dryers. They go into, at night, I'll take my insoles out of my boots and just kind of set them down by the stove inside the teepee, the wood stove. And then I'll just drop these little dryers, boom, inside my boot. And I'll plug them into my battery bank. And that, that little sucker just blows warm air from the teepee, from the heat inside the teepee into my boot. And uh, boom, I have a very uh, dry, warm, and cozy boot each day. And for, for a guy like me, I sweat a lot. My feet sweat a lot. Especially if I get some adrenaline, giant buck walks out. It's like I walk through a swamp. And uh, day after day, I can just keep adding moisture to my boot. And so without a way to air it out and dry it out, they can get nasty and wet and feel cold every day. So uh, I love these boot dryers. They weigh almost nothing. Graxon makes them. Use the code Gritty over there. You get yourself a pair. I just think they're phenomenal. Tons of guys use them now. Tons of guys have bought them. I think they're, they're just uh, they're a must-have, especially um, when there's no way in heck they're going to dry because it's just too cold. 
you know, it's, it's 15 degrees, it's 30 degrees, and you keep sweating in your boot for 10 days, seven days, five, six days, where does that moisture go? Um, if you have a lightweight boot, not a full grain leather like these Laponia, I can get away with just hanging these up with no boot dryer um, in the top of the canopy of my teepee. Uh, I can hang them from a tripod, camera tripod, or that I typically backpack with, or glassing tripod, or I can hang them in the Peaks teepee. There's a cross member there of Trekkers that I can just hang them up in the, cro in the top of the teepee and let that heat just dry them out. And that's generally enough. But these boot dryers, they are, they are, they are, will guarantee like a quick dry boot, uh, more airflow, a little bit, a little bit, uh, nicer setup. So, um, if you, if there's two of you, you only need one pair of boot dryers, probably between the two of you. Um, I'll put my boot, I'll take my boots off when I go to bed and the stove is running. I'll throw these on there for 10 or 20, 30 minutes before I go to bed as I'm eating dinner in the morning, as the stove comes up pre-dawn. We will throw these boot dryers in. I'll, I'll just turn them back on again and I'll let them warm up. And then when I get ready to depart from the teepee in the morning, I can throw on a very warm pair of supple, uh, nice boots that um, keep my feet warm from the get, from the start. Because what happens is when you put on a pair of really cold, ice cold boots that are wet, a little bit damp inside, Right away, your feet are getting cold before you've even left the camp. And then your feet are cold as you go on your hike. And if you don't hike very far, or if you just step out in glass from your tent location, you're, you're, you're already trying, you're already, now you got cold feet and you're spending the whole day trying to warm them up. It's a lot easier to start out with warm feet and warm boots and just me, keep them that way. Right here is a saw this is the um this is the uh, pocket boy this is the uh what is it silky silky pocket boy curve um they make some a little bit longer than this uh that we also use depending on the hunt we're on but for this hunt um that's a great saw it's amazing um i use this to cut a lot of moose ribs and it's pretty dang dull at this point um it's like cutting rocks does it say the millimeters? Is that like a 135? This is one of the most aggressive. <clears throat> so for cutting well, bone, I should have had... As far as length. They have oh. like a 135, a 170. A lot this of is guys, a 130. 130, okay. A lot of guys ask that. Yeah, this is the 130. I think it's the smallest saw, saw I could get. Yet, it's a big boy. I mean, it, it kind of does anything you need it to do. But it doesn't take much to get... It doesn't. It's not that hard to get a little bit longer saw that does a little bit more. Um, this is Firestarter. It's trioxane tablets. Um, and what are they called? Uh, the ones that were the S bit, S bit, the S bit Firestarter. I also have, uh, I just ordered a bunch, Brad and Ryan have been using it on the last few hunts and it's a lot cheaper and it works great. So I I've been using that. Um, it's called what? S bit. S bit. It's a little white, um, Firestarter. It's nice just to take that, throw it inside your your uh, your seek outside stove or whatever brand you're using, let it burn, and then just stack one or two, three, four, or five sticks on top, and it just burns so long, it just burns them, and pretty soon you have a raging fire in like minutes. We should do a little video on that. Um, I don't even like hardly make kindling anymore. I just like <laughs> stick that S bit under there and start burning. Now trioxane is a little more powerful. For, I keep that on hand for in case I'm freezing to death, hypothermia fell in a river or a lake or whatever. It, any spark touches it at all, it just, it'll burn underwater. It won't go out. The S-bit stuff, um, I'll get it going and then it'll burn out. It'll, it'll puff out if I drop it or don't quite coddle it a little bit and baby it. So you want to, it's not my, it's great. But I like having trioxane there for just super emergency situations because um, that stuff just is burns hot no matter what. Um, this is my goat knife. I like the uh, all-in-one blade here. I wear this around my neck. I've talked about it before. I forget what all the names are, all the different knives, but I like the one that's not a two-piece. I like the single. And then, of course, I have the, I have the goat knife Ibex for the replaceable blade with the little uh, scalpel blades for skinning game and 
So those are the two knives I bring typically. This one and the and the uh, and the uh, goat knife uh, skinning ibex blade, which is just a little blade with a replaceable, like I said. So um, can't recommend this enough. It's got the Nitro V steel. It's it's a great hard steel knife. Um, and then uh, this is my battery core, my uh, all my cables that I need for charging all my different devices and products that I have. I put my cables in this little zip pouch. And then right here, I have a Dark Energy Poseidon. Um, use the code GRITTY over there and um, you can get a discount on, on your Poseidon. And th this thing right here um, it will charge my phone two or three times, I think. Um, and yeah, that's that's what we use as our power bank, that's what I use for my um, power cords. And I put them inside this Stealthy Hunter pouch. I want to replace pretty much all my pouches with the Stealthy Hunter pouches. I like these. They're, they're built great. Um, they help out Ryan. Also, anytime you shop at Stealthy, you should always use the code Gritty because that helps Gritty and uh, helps Stealthy too. So, um, and then uh, all I have in here that's left is I have a bag cover, uh, the Stone Glacier backpack cover. So if, keep my bag dry. It's just like a little bag that goes around the whole, the whole uh, backpack, and it's like a rain fly. Rain fly. So that's the uh, top lid, folks. Um, that's all the things that I kind of have in here. Like I said, I mean, if I need to sterilize water, if I need to communicate on my inReach, I got all that. I got my boot dryers, like I got my fire starter in here. I got my extra pairs of gloves and hats and beanies. I got my backup headlamps, spoons. Like I said, this is the this is the this is the bag that I bring into my teepee with me when the uh, when it's night and everything I need for the night is there it's all kind of in the lid so um that's how i run it okay so um getting into the the bag here i have with me i'm bringing on this trip um i have this petzl um ride pick and this thing is eight ounces it's not it's not very heavy and I've debated taking it, leaving it, taking it, leaving it uh, many, many times. But um, on this particular hunt, it's so steep and we're hunting so high and it's so rocky. We have all these areas where we got to, we almost always have to dig out beds and we're looking for rocks or sticks to try to dig out a bed. And sometimes it can take quite a while in the evening for us to level out an area where we can pitch um, a teepee. So given that, um, um, given that situation, I'm going to go ahead and bring this lightweight, basically pick shovel. And, uh, I've used it to kick out, um, to dig out some flat spots up on some of these steep hills. And, uh, it's incredibly fast, useful, nice piece of equipment. And, uh, so we'll see, I would not bring it except that it's just so hard to find a camp spot that's somewhat flat. Usually it's, it's got some slope, even if it's somewhat flat, but with, with a pick like this, I can, I can dig out the flat spot, even though the teepee's pitched sideways, I can dig out so that my, my sleeping bag and where I'm sleeping and where like Brad will sleep or Ryan will sleep is at least somewhat flat. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it. We're going to see if it was worth the wait or not. I, I think for this particular hunt, it's going to be, um, it's always hard to decide whether to bring something like that because I know I could drum up a stick and kind of do the same thing. Um, but, uh, but I, it, it, that just takes that much longer. It's that much more difficult. So we'll see, uh, eight ounces. I can't even hardly tell that I even have it in my hand. Like literally, or it might be six ounces, but I mean, I have it in my hand and I'm like, how could I not bring this? How could I leave it? It's just, it feels like nothing. So we'll see. This is, like I said, a steep hunt with lots of digging. And I'm sick of digging with a rock. <laughs> sick of digging with a rock. So we shall see if it works out. Ryan is all about me bringing that. Uh, just not himself. 
Uh, this is my stealthy glassing pad. Uh, if you don't have one, you should get one. They are um, one of those things where once you've had one, you'll never go back. You'll, you'll, you'll be like, why didn't I have, where has this been all my life? Um, we use it for so many things from fanning a fire to sitting on for glassing, for standing on in the teepee, for using as a table when I cook at night. Um, gosh, Brad, the, the list goes on. Flagging people. Flagging people, go right, go left. You're there, you know, kind of stuff. We also use it like this. We bend it over and we use it uh, for the butt of the rifle and you can kind of put your fist in here and you can make it lower or higher and use it as a backrest for your rifle it's just got a lot of handy dandy um, benefits and uses it's just i don't leave it at home ever anymore and the few hunts where i haven't brought it i'm like i can't live without it i'm an idiot why did why is that not here with me so um let's get into what's in the bag here um you guys all know we typically use a seek outside uh, stove i have with me right here this is the um seek outside um this is the this is the medium large u-turn yeah yeah you're right this is a large u-turn and um so that's the stove and i have the pipes in here i'll get to that in just a second um, before i get into that Right here in the front here, I have a few things I like to access pretty easily. One of them is my Kuyu uh, puffy vest. I mean, this thing is like go-go gadget. It just, it, 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 it's like the size of a pop can or smaller when you really smash it down. But then it's so warm for its size. Uh, I've been wearing this uh, under this origin top and it's been a nice warm blend. Um, you know, it, it's been nice. It's interesting, this Origin top, I unzip it quite often because it's a little more free. Um, it doesn't, because it's wool and it's not like four-way stretch kind of material, it has its pros, it has its cons. One of the things that you, you, after wearing a lot of articulated clothing that has all that stretch, you'll find when you put on like a wool jacket like this, you don't have the same mobility as you do. But then I really like the performance of the wool itself in terms of its warmth and breathability and we'll see as it gets wet you know how it performs as well uh once i sweat on it and how well it breathes and still keeps me warm even though it's a damp it'll be interesting but um um but but yeah it's, it's hard to beat the warmth to ratio performance of a puffy like this um in here i have these gloves like i was talking about before um, lately I've been really loving these. So like I said, it's the fleece liners, like so, these Sitka gloves. Um, for a long time, I didn't bother with these, but now I've been using them more and more like in Alaska and I'm like, man, I really do like these. Um, they've, they've got this Gore-Tex outer, they're very technical glove. Um, and I can slide my fingers right in here. Um. And now, now I've got like a wind layer, a, Gore, a Gore-Tex, you know, layer. And uh, you can tighten it here around the cuff. If it does rain, I don't get stuff going back down in there. Um, this glove is like pretty bomb-proof. Um, I typically do not like gloves. Um, I prefer mittens because mittens are just warmer than gloves. However... <laughs> This particular glove by Sitka is, it's just, the fingers are so fat um, that it's surprisingly um, warm, even though your fingers are not together. It's just a very robust glove. Um, but um, that said, sometimes I like to throw a heat pack inside. I can't really do that to warm my fingers up in a glove. I can do that in a mitten. So... Um, this is the glove that I have, and uh, but I always bring, I always bring the mittens. So this is a Gore-Tex mitten by Sitka. It's my other favorite glove. Been using it for years. Um, I can slip this this uh, fleece liner into the mitten, just like that. And now I kind of have my fingers more close together, warmer. I could even throw a hot pad in the back of this. 
and uh, have a little warm haven for my glove, for my mitten to go in, pull it out if I don't need that extra warmth. Just in case, um, you know, one of these sets of Gore, Gore-Tex gloves or whatever gets gets too wet and cold or whatever, I always have that backup. And then sometimes we hike a lot of miles and I'd be sweating like crazy. I don't want a glove on at all. Like I'm just sweating. When I do that, sometimes I strip down to my skivvies and the only thing I put on is rain pants, rain jacket, and this Gore thing. And I will hike five or six miles in um, sweating my can off, but I'll be wearing rain gear. So it doesn't, I'm just, I'm not getting my clothes all wet. You know, the sweat's just going nowhere, but the wind is blocking it. I, I tend to like just the fact that this is blocking all the wind. It's enough to trap in enough warmth, but I'm not um, getting my, my clothes just soaked with sweat. Get back to camp. I can take off my rain gear. It dries out pretty quick because it's just sweat. Um, so I'll often only wear this throughout the weeks um, to block the wind a little bit and trap in a little bit of heat. And uh, especially if it's windy but not the, all that um, super cold and I'm hiking. If I'm moving, I'm sweating. That's just how I'm built. If I'm exerting energy, I'm sweating and sweating quite a bit. So I like to be able to block the wind, but stay cool. So anyway, that's kind of my, uh, my setup. These, these gloves have turned out over time to be, um, a real favorite that I didn't think that I liked early on. The only thing I wish is that I had got a large, I mean, an extra large instead of a large because my, I have giant, I have big hands for my size and uh, this is a large glove and it's, it's not big enough, but these are expensive gloves. So I'm not going <laughs> to too cheap to buy another pair. So, um, that's the, uh, the glove situation. Um, I typically will keep, like I said, these Gore-Tex mittens, these are just a Gore-Tex outer. If I want to, by the way, you can just wear this, Gore, and they got a fleece lining, and I can wear them like this, and that's really nice. All of this stuff is sort of a layering technique, depending on how cold it gets, um, how wet it is, and just the situation I'm in. Sometimes I want my fingers because I'm adjusting dials on my camera or whatever, and it's still raining, so this is nice where the where the mittens, I don't have free finger control, but sometimes I want a heat pad in here and, and something else. So that's how I roll. So these are the, uh, the gloves I'm running. These are both made by Sitka. Like I said, uh, um, and then I just have this, this, th these liners. And then I do have a fingerless wool glove, like a Filson or the black Ovis, which I also have, which sometimes I'll wear that fingerless glove and just throw on the mittens as well. Just again, it's temperature related. I get cold hands, I get cold feet, so I like to have options when it comes to gloves. Some people will just bring one glove. Um, I like options. I have extra pairs, uh, one set of uh, extra pair of um, liners and one extra pair of hiking socks. In here, the last thing that I have that's also accessible is uh, body warmer hot hands uh, these are just a luxury item that are are just there for comfort it's nice to have i gotta say it's nice it, it's 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 a little bit of weight but um man throwing one of these in on some real cold days just makes life so much more comfortable and makes the hunt so much more enjoyable i'm a tough guy for carrying loads so i'd rather carry a little extra weight and uh, have that comfort. These are the toe warmers. I've got um, six of these. I've got six or seven of these body warmers. So we're, we've got like a 10 or 12 day hunt. So every other day, but about half the days I have something if things get really cold. Um, if my feet get really cold because we have this cold snap and it's negative temps and um, I have these, uh, these, I have three of these full foot length insole warmers sometimes we end up sitting on a hillside and we're glassing literally for you know from morning till dark 
a couple days in a row and all that stationary sitting with freezing cold weather makes it tough so having something like this that you can throw in there while you're just picking apart the landscape for hours on end it helps you stay in the zone helps you stay focused on glassing because you're not constantly freezing to death so anyway i also wouldn't bring these if i was bringing a much heavier warmer boot but i've talked to ryan about this i think we're going to be hiking a lot he thinks we're going to be hiking a lot we're going to cover hundreds of miles maybe exploring new stuff trying to find some um, old ancient deer in some crazy places with that much activity i want the lighter boot uh, I want it to breathe more with that much hiking. And, uh, but I know that we'll always have days that it's really cold and we're just sitting for hours. That's where these foot warmers come into place. That's my strategy for this particular hunt that's coming up. Okay. So, um, I'll get into the main bag here, put this stuff back in here and, uh, I hope you guys are finding this useful. Like I said, anything that we're a partner with, you can check out in the description field of our YouTube videos. And uh, it supports us when you shop there. And it gets you a discount. Everything we pretty much recommend, we've partnered with a company to give you a discount on. So it's a win-win. All right, right here I have a Seeker 3-liter. This is the uh, Hydra Pack 3-liter water bladder. Um, it's It's just a rubber like silicone type bladder that we use i have four of these because um on some of these places we're going to hike to the top of a mountain and we're going to carry 30 pounds of water up there because we're going to stay there for a couple of days and uh so i bring them they don't weigh anything so it's nice to have the capacity uh, just to grab a lot of water if we need to but you know we'll see and then the other thing, and I, and I typically run my water, my water bladder in this side pouch on when I run my stone pack because it fits just right. Once I fill it up, the sleeve fits here. I typically carry my rifle on the opposite side, on the right side. So the sleeve, the water kind of weighs about what my rifle weighs on this side to kind of compensate a little bit. If I'm not doing that, then I'm running a big lens, camera lens or a heavy optic on one side. Um, but I got Brad for this trip. So um, this is uh, just a little mug, a little plastic mug. Um, I've had some titanium ones and just what I had this one since like 2007. Um, but anyway, uh, got that in there too. Okay, over here. These are, uh, this is my breakfast for 10 days. All my breakfast. And uh, these are all my dinners. For 10 days these are just mountain ops uh what are they 10 10 liter 10 liter stuff sacks so um that's 10 days of food 10 days breakfast 10 days dinners and then uh i have another bag of 10 days of uh sort of snack food which is my lunch kind of food in between but those are all freeze-dried breakfast freeze-dried dinners or granola or something like that Here's the other half of the Seek Outside uh, stove. This is the stove pipe that goes to the stove itself. Um, I think I think we're going to run the uh, a prototype Peaks teepee on this trip. We're going to really put it through the test. Um, there's a there's the latest version that they've got. We're going to run that um, and uh, use the Seek Outside stove. I think we're also bringing a Cimarron. Or a red cliff or something as well from seek and we'll kind of uh um roll that way because there's a few of us going um this is my mountain ops uh hoodie it's the lightweight sort of next to skin merino hoodie um which i wear often like i said this coupled with the origin um wool blend hoodie uh it's sort of like my replacement for my sitka apex and we'll see how how it goes uh, i can wear just this one or this one that's just a little heavier or just just this one or i can wear this one with this one over to the top and put on this kuyu vest if i needed to as well or i can just wear this combined with this like 
different layers. I'll mess around with it. Normally I wouldn't bring all these options, but I want to test them. I want to see, I want to play with them and see, hmm, how, do, what's the combo that I like? Um, like I said, two pairs of pants on this trip. These are my Sitka Timberlines. Um, these are kind of like, you know, good luck in a way. I mean, I've had them for, um, I don't know, since 2015, I think, 16. These are the old school. Um, I'm not bringing knee pads. They kind of make me sweat. But uh, you can see Suzanne has done a few repairs. Um, I just can't let them go, folks. This little stain in the rear end, ignore that. I don't know where that comes from, you know, except a little bit of sweat. Uh, but, yeah, these are my Sika Timberline. They're just a comfortable, loose pant. Like I said, um, I don't know what temps we're going to get. We're going to get quite a few different ones. I hate the weight penalty of carrying two pairs of pants. But, um, again, on this trip, I'm going to kind of test things out a little bit. I'll probably be wearing these a lot, and these will sit in my bag unless it gets a lot colder than I suspect or unless we're a lot more stationary than I suspect. Um, you know, the other option is long johns, but I hate long johns. Um, one thing that I do sometimes is I'll throw on a pair of, I'll take a pair of long johns and I'll cut them off at the knee so they're shorts and I'll wear those under a pair of these so I have a little bit of warmth from the waist to the knees so my pants are a little thicker but that's what i do um so because those those timberline aren't light when you're wearing them it's one thing but just holding them in my hand i feel like groaning you know it's like these are that's a that's a pant you know especially compared to the sitka the kuyu right there that are light this is the uh jet boil minimo this is a micro adjust pot it's got the wide mouth it you can fine tune the boil because it's got the micro adjust um uh gas nozzle there and um i'm bringing quite a bit of fuel on this trip because i normally i bring the uh, the size smaller than this but um i i think i'm going to be boiling a lot of stuff um on this trip so so far this is what i've opted for i might chicken out at the end and go with one size smaller sometimes i can usually get by on a 10-day hunt with that smaller one but i have to conserve a little and i don't know if i want to um right here is a this is a kuyu um puffy jacket they're they're ultra pro or something like that i'll probably be wearing this um it's either this or I'll wear a stone glacier puffy. One of the two haven't decided. This one does not have a hood and the stone does. Um, I like them both. And uh, so we'll see. I, I might, uh, but you always need, I think, a heavy, serious down jacket um, for when the apocalypse comes and uh the strength the, the warmth to weight ratio of a big giant puffy down is hard to beat you know um th this i really love this jacket but again without a hoodie it's less compelling um they make it with a hoodie i just don't have one with a hoodie the uh the stone does have a hoodie and um and i i've only worn the stone on one hunt with, with ryan and it was a couple of years ago so i'm kind of anxious to just get it out and try it and see how it compares so I can speak to it. But uh, this is just uh, just camera, lens, cleaner stuff. Not really applicable to everybody. Um, right here I have game bags. These are Graxaw game bags. Um, they're six ounces. Use the code GRITTY. You get these with a discount. And then my replacement blades are here. Um, scalpel blades that go on, like I said, the GOAT ibex uh handle here it's kind of tough to beat i mean it's just handy it's easy to use um so that's sort of my kill kit um man it's just weighs nothing because game bags <clears throat> and there's like six or eight game bags in there. yeah there's there's more than enough for a muley buck um and uh so love Graxaw's kit it's just it's just nothing you know and with with the goat knife, little knife like that, it's just like pull the sucker out, 
break down an animal and it's like all everything goes in the bags we can hang them in trees do what we need to do but love that um these are the um black ovis puffy pants um and uh i washed these the other day and they're like new again like they were getting pretty beat up and then I wash them and I'm like, oh, they're lofty and soft and fluffy and nice. And so they definitely got matted down and worn out, um, beating the crap out of them, but throwing them in the wash and they're like new again. Um, the, the, it's hard for me to recommend another puffy pant brand because this, the black Ovis ones are so cheap, like hundred, 150 and everyone else is two to $300, 250 so they get the job done. Um, I think these are XL size. I like big puffy pants. If I'm going to put them on, I want to just have them be loose. I'm not hiking in them. I'm just sitting in them. So um, anyway, they, they get a little more compact. Um, they're just in a big stuff sack. They, my backpack kind of smashes them down. But um, that's the puffy pant. Got to have puffy pants. If you don't have a puffy pant, puffy jacket, you're doing it wrong. And then um, I've got... Uh, this is the Sitka Dew Point rain gear. I've been running this for a while. Um, it's a great backpacking rain gear. It's about as light, but as high performance as I have found. I don't know about the other brands because I haven't used them in quite a while. But man, these, these little puppies are amazing. Um, I used the Dew Point pants in Alaska from in moose country. They did a great job keeping the moisture out. I did not wear the jacket there. I went ahead and brought the, I forget, what's it? Because uh, kind of heavy-duty rain jacket. The Jetstream? Maybe. I'm not sure. Or the, I don't remember what the name is. Terrible with names, folks. But um, it's not the Jetstream. Um, Stormfront. That's what it is. I wore the Stormfront um rain jacket in alaska for moose that jacket's pretty sick it's it's a sweet heavy duty but still for it's got it's it's a nice heavy uh durable rain jacket but um not too heavy but it's hard to beat the dew point um for the type of hunt we're doing right now just just a quick backpacking hiking hunt between the pants and the jacket they're about the lightest i found and uh, a friend of mine was like um it didn't work for you, did it? When you were in Alaska, when you were moose hunting, like you wore it and it wasn't great. And I was like, well, I didn't wear the dew point jacket when I was in Alaska, but I wore the pants, but the pants, remember when you're wearing a rain jacket, they come down to here. And then I got gaiters on down low. So only part of my rain pant that's super exposed is maybe from mid thigh down. And they did great for, you know, sitting kneeling hiking and and they did great so um for me i've been impressed with the sick of dew point um i don't want to carry a rain gear that's a lot heavier than this but you got to have rain gear as much as i hate packing rain gear you got to have it it's just sometimes it never comes out of your bag and that sucks because i hate i hate wearing rain gear and i hate carrying rain gear but when the rains come, they, that's makes all the difference. Okay, so right here is a possibles pouch where I have sort of like antihistamine. Um, I have um, Imodium AD for diarrhea if I get the beaver fever. I have a secondary uh, dark energy uh, chart battery pack. Um, I have lots of 550 cord, probably 100 feet um, in here, 250 foot spools. I've got, um, pain pills, ibuprofen, band-aids, zip ties, uh, I, my, uh, blood clotting kit, like all the, the, the first aid type stuff. That's a whole, this, this kit is a whole discussion in and of itself, and I'm not going to get into it right now. But Ryan Lampers also, if you're interested, he, they're selling a killer kit right now. Use the code Gritty over there and get their first aid backcountry kit. I don't, what do they call it? I don't remember. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But he and our friend Corey, who's a, who's a 
um, like a wilderness doctor, um, came up with the kit and it's got, it's kind of got all the things in it you need from tourniquets to, um, band-aids, the, the, like everything for backcountry. Um, and, uh, you can get that kit. I don't know what it costs, but it's a bargain. It's a good deal. Use the code gritty over there and it helps me out, helps Ryan and Hillary out. Um, so I think, I think you should check that out, but that's kind of what this is basically with a few little twists. Um, a lot of times again, what sucks about this is it's not exactly light and often it never gets unzipped, but when I do need it, um, it's, it's, it's been highly critical. Um, you know, you don't want to end up on the mountain with severe cases of diarrhea or an allergic reaction. You need a little Benadryl. You need a little Imodium AD. You need some pain pills. You need some ibuprofen. Um, you know, I have steroid cream, some rash cream in there. Um, and then of course, all your band-aids cuts and uh, super glue, um, tapes and stuff to, to bandage up a, a big, big, uh, injury, uh, things like that. Tourniquet. Okay. So, um, back to the bag. This is the anchor power port solar. Is it the 513? Nope. Um, 21 watt solar panel. These have been hard to find apparently as we've recommended these and talked about them to people. This is the three panel anchor solar panel charger. We have been beating the hell out of these and using these now for about two years. Um, and uh, they're still going strong and we rely on them heavily. We pretty much um, can get a, uh, a full charge on a, on a sunny, normal sunny day. If it's out in the day, it can take a dead uh, dark energy battery pack and fill it up all the way. Um, when it's, when it's a bad day or you get half a day of sun, you know, you get two bars instead of four bars on your dark energy. Um, but generally on a hunt, like what we're doing, even in overcast, Ryan has laid his out on a sleeping bag inside a Dyneema Cuban fiber teepee. And we have hiked up the mountain and we have come back that night and through the tent wall, the light has been enough to charge his his dark energy from zero to full in a day so this thing is nothing it, it it blows away a goal zero it blows away most of the stuff out there there are ones that actually perform better as i was doing a little digging and research but they also weigh way more i think this is 14 ounces um the other ones are four panels instead of three and they're big and they're like two pounds it's like Yes, they perform a little better, but the reason this is so amazing is that it's 14 ounces. So this coupled with a single dark energy will get the job done. I can keep my stereo pin charged. I can keep my iPhone charged with my maps on there. Um, I can keep my, uh, my headlamp charged. Um, I can keep my earbuds charged. When I'm listening to audiobooks, um, am I forgetting something, Brad? Camera stuff when we need to. Camera, yeah. We even uh, recharge these lav mics; those can be charged. Like, it's 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 amazing what we're able to do. And you can you can use your phone to watch movies, to listen to things. Uh, you don't have to conserve power on your phone as much. And when you have long nights like we do on some of these later season hunts, where it gets dark at four thirty, five o'clock. It doesn't get light till 8 a.m. Those are long days, long evenings in a teepee, and it's nice to wind down and watch a movie or something. So we download a bunch of movies before we go on our trips, audiobooks and such, as you're glassing for hours, you have something to listen to, um, podcasts. Well, in the past, I would conserve, try really hard not to overuse even my maps. I'd be afraid to be on my maps a lot. Not anymore. Not anymore. I pretty much have unlimited power. I always have almost a full power bank if i get two or three days of rain and overcast weather and we don't get any charges it's like dang it but then we get one full day of charge and we're back in business as if it's a brand new fully charged power bank use it in alaska we've used it everywhere can't recommend this enough i don't know if you can even find them um i've seen a bunch of refurbished ones you can buy them used like new right now um but uh this charger 
has been huge for us. I used to be totally against solar panels because they just weren't, it was better to carry an extra, it was better to carry four power banks than it was to try to carry one of these, but not anymore. I just wish we had, I had bought a whole bunch more uh, a year and a half ago when, when they were all in stock. They were 60 bucks when we bought them and now they're like 85 used and refurbished. Um, this is a Thermarest Neo Air. Um, this is the Thermarest X-Therm, yeah. actually. So this is the X-Therm. It's got a little bit of insulation. R value of four or six or something. I think it's six. Six. I think the X-Light is four. It's uh, nice and warm. Heavy, pretty heavy duty. It's done the job. It's a little heavier than some pads, but for this time of year, it's it's awesome. I've got a slow leak in this one that I've got to remember to fix uh, before we leave on this trip. Um, it seems like every air pad gets a leak every now and then. Um, and uh, it's pretty simple to fix. We've gotten good at that. All of us have gone through holes in our air pads. It is a, it is a fact of life. It's going to happen. So, um, But nowadays, it's like we're pretty good at just getting it over to the water putting a little water on and get, get any, near any body of water and you can pretty much find the hole. Um, even if you just put water with a sponge, you know, ringing over the top of it and just kind of look for where the air is spattering out, um, you can find the hole. The number one culprit, the number one cause of holes for our air pads, number one, the main reason we get them is sparks from the stove. And that's almost always nowadays because I'm pretty good about cleaning in the ground. I use a Tyvek ground cloth, which is pretty robust and prevents punctures. Like I said, we're digging out the ground pretty good for a nice bed. Our holes either come from a sticker that was in our pants, like, like stuck in my pants from the day and I sit on my pad. That's why I always try to put my sleeping bag down on my pad and I sit on my sleeping bag on my pad. So if I have any sharp object, my, my sleeping bag sort of... My down bag can kind of insulate against going through into the air pad. So this is my, uh, yeah, this is my Thermarest. Uh, the, uh, but the, the other, the main thing is sparks from the stove, shoot out, and it takes one hot coal, pop, as you're loading wood into the stove. Even when the stove is turned and not facing you, it seems to like hit something ricochet. And the second it hits your pad, pss, just put the little hole in it. It's not a big deal. We use uh, t tenacious tape typically, and uh, you can use some duct tape. Tenacious tape works a lot better, and uh, we just clean it up, put a little sticker on there, and you're good to go. Tyvek tape, any of that works pretty well. Okay, and then uh, I've got my sleeping bag here. It's in an old stuff sack that I've I've got here. That this is a this is a. This is a sleeping bag that y'all haven't seen yet and is being tested. So I'm not going to talk about it right at the moment, but it's pretty sweet. I'm, I'm really digging it. And then um, the last thing inside the bag is this is a Tyvek um, ground cloth. And uh, these are 20, 30, 40 bucks. Um, I run mine through the washing machine three or four or five times. Uh, it needs to be one with a center bar typically. Agitator. Agitator. That helps. Um, you run that thing through and uh, it'll make it quiet so it doesn't make a ton of noise. Brad has been irresponsible with his. And so every time he gets it out, which is going to scare all the deer away, uh, it sounds like a thunderstorm and cracking thunder or tinfoil is just, it just, it's bad. It sounds like the stovepipe uh, on the teepee that is just crackling. So he, he needs to work on, on uh, that preferably before we go because it is loud um so but it's hard to beat tyvek in the end uh, it's a cheap cheap uh material you 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 once it does get supple who cares it's quiet um it's uh super clean and it does really do a good job of resisting punctures from sharp objects where other items might be a vapor bar barrier but they're not much of a puncture barrier, if you feel me. Okay, so um, that's kind of, that's the whole gear thing. I think I, I, think I nailed everything. Um, things like weapon, camera gear, that's a whole different subject, um, which we will talk about 
later food is another subject but um this is just this is really about the gear that i'm bringing on the trip if you've got questions leave them in the comments section below on the youtube video we'll try to get to those um we're going to be gone in the next few days and we won't be back till it'll be a couple weeks we're going to be tromping around in the mountains testing and using all this stuff um but you got questions leave them there we'll we will get back to them when we get back and we'll answer your questions if if we have service we'll be always checking to see there and getting back to you there um i'm excited to try out this new stuff like origin some of the some of the gear we have it's always a uh, fun to test it and see how it does and how it performs and um and it's fun to report back to all of you guys um like i said use the code gritty at all our partners check out mountain ops if you need some ignite and some um, yeti a little pre-workout a little pick me up i like the renew use the code gritty over at stealthy nutrition the sleep gummies have been excellent i use them daily i love their cbd products use the code gritty over there and uh, check out their e-charge for electrolyte their electrolyte mix uh, if you don't have a glassing pad and you don't have a rifle cover stealthy hunter rifle cover glassing pad get one they're a great product and uh, peaks the one thing i didn't go over is trekking poles i have trekking poles um, that we'll be bringing they're also made by peaks they're carbon fiber uh, upper and an aluminum lower they're amazing you know one of the things that i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, do a little video about and you're gonna see in upcoming films because um they say necessity is the mother of invention i was working on a moose and the leg is so giant and i'm like and a caribou too i was doing some of this by myself on the caribou especially and i'm like i need to rig up like a some sort of jack or something to hold these legs up well i messed around with the trekking poles and got this system where it was a game changer i don't know why i haven't been using trekking poles to gut and skin animals for years but now I'm using them like crazy and it's it's worth bringing poles simply for skinning by yourself a deer elk caribou sized animal a moose um it's amazing uh deer you can get away with less but man it was it was excellent to have so check out peaks for that get yourself those trekking poles they're great durable product excellent product well designed for what we use them for and uh if you don't have a explorer membership at go hunt Right now, they have uh, a deal where if you get their maps, their digital maps, you you get their 50 bucks, but you'll get an in-store credit um, in exchange when you buy the maps uh, for $50 at the Go Hunt gear shop. So if you need a pair of gloves, pants, something like that, a teepee, they'll give you that credit. So essentially, you're getting the maps for nothing. They're, they're pretty much free if you're in need of some gear because the store credit equals what you paid for for the maps so check it out i i you know i've been using the maps a lot lampers and i have been using the maps a lot and uh i've been saying i don't think that uh that 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 this is a one size fits all this is or this these maps are are to replace everything you already have but gosh man they were the the, the satellite imagery was um critically useful on especially when we were hunting moose and caribou because everything was so flat there's no topo lines everything looks the same on your map it's just a flat map and so you end up leaning on satellite imagery a lot more the photograph of the landscape as a guide for where you're at because there are no topo lines and man when i was toggling between different products different map systems by some of the competitors that satellite imagery was so crisp and clear and useful. We were really able to get some really great shots um, using the satellite imagery. So check that out. Um, use the code Gritty over at Go Hunt. Get yourself the maps and use the code Gritty at the gear shop. You get you save money there too, and that helps us. If you're in need of any hunting gear uh, and you're going to buy it, go buy it at Go Hunt Gear Shop. And uh, like I said, use the code Gritty over there, and it saves us. It helps us um, keep doing what we love to do. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll see you in a few weeks. Stay gritty.